So it is the morning of game three right now, and there is one thing that I want to talk about, and that is Luka Doncic not having help, allegedly. Okay, that has been a conversation going on going into game three so far because as the Dallas Mavericks go home, they are down 2-0, and I'm going to just keep it a stack. Luka Doncic has been a one-man army for better for the individual fans, but for the team fans, it's definitely for the worse. They are down 2-0 in the NBA Finals. Um, and let me just bring up the stats from the team so far. We're looking at P.J. Washington giving you 16-8, and eight, which box score-wise is actually pretty decent. He's shooting 46% from the field, but he's shooting 13% from three. Um, he just really hasn't been there. He hasn't been this uberly effective player. Uh, Kyrie Irving has honestly been the star of the show for worse. Uh, Kyrie Irving is supposed to be Luka's running mate. He is supposed to be the Scottie Pippen to his Michael Jordan. He is supposed to be the second half of arguably the most talented offensive backcourt in history. And in a series where, you know, motherfuckers aren't expecting Kyrie Irving to dominate defensively. But people are expecting him to be effective offensively. And so far... He's putting up Jordan Poole numbers. I I can't even lie to you. And shout out to Jordan Poole, but I'm talking about Washington Wizards Jordan Poole, not Golden State Jordan Poole, right? 14 points. Well, 2023 Jordan Poole was pretty bad. But uh, 14 points, four assists, shooting 35% from the, free, uh, from the field, and has yet to hit a three. Has yet to hit a three. Um, and I think has only gotten to the line once, and I'm not even sure if this was a pair. Maybe th these are two technical free throws. I don't, I don't know. Outside of that, Daniel Gafford, he he had some he had some shine in game two, but for the most part, his ability to be a lob there has been neutralized. Derrick Jones Jr. He's looking like a fraud out there. He's shooting 38% from the field, 20% from three. Um, this is a three and D player not hitting. His threes and also again not being a lob threat. So at that point, you're just playing defense. And with the way Boston is attacking that defense, you're not even the point of attack defender a majority of the time. They are attacking mismatches uh, from a height perspective with Kristaps Porzingis, or they're either attacking Luka and Kyrie and forcing that switch one way or another, or they're attacking Derek Lively or Dan uh, Daniel Gafford on the perimeter. Derek Jones Jr. is honestly not in a lot of these actions. And I think that is a deliberate game plan of the Boston Celtics. Jaden Hardy, not really giving you much. Josh Green, he's supposed to be another guy coming off the bench that's supposed to give you much. He's not giving you much either. Derek Lively. Derek Lively was a very impactful player for the Dallas Mavericks in this playoff run so far. I believe leading up to the series, he literally did not miss a shot in the playoffs, if I remember correctly. But so far... He's giving you two points a game. And once again, his effectiveness on the offensive end and on the defensive end has just been neutralized. Dante Exum, he gave you eight minutes um, last game, and he gave you a three. Maxi Kleber, he's supposed to be the stretch big for this team, and he won't even fucking shoot. He is just another big out there. I can't lie. I don't, I don't really know what Maxi Kleber is doing out there. And I've been saying it going into this series, man. At this point, y'all need offense so badly. Give Tim Hardaway Jr. some tick. God, y'all need threes. Y'all need offense. Get my guy Tim Hardaway Jr. some minutes, man. Damn. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This is the NBA Finals. But this has caused some discourse on the timeline. I'm going to keep it a stack. I don't take this account seriously because... This dude just be rage baiting. Like he literally tweets for engagement. So I don't I don't take him too seriously, but this has been the sentiment for of, of a lot of people is Luka Doncic has no help. Luka has no help. And also, Luka Doncic should win finals MVP. Because he's the best player on the floor. And I believe, let me pull up NBA.com. Um Fine, wait, NBA Finals MVP ladder. Because I believe, yep, this is the NBA.com's official Finals MVP ladder written by Michael C. Wright. So I believe this is only from one writer. They have Drew Holiday as the leading Finals MVP after two games, followed by Luka, 
Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Chris Stops, Porzingis. So it's literally four Celtics players, and then Luka had two. Right. So let me speak on the Dallas Mavericks, or Luka Doncic has no help card. That's a lie. I'm sorry, that's a lie. Y'all are not about to lie during the NBA Finals. I think there's a difference between not having help and the help not showing up. I think there's a difference between not having help and just having your help get outplayed, out-schemed, and neutralized. Because in a heliocentric offense, which is what the Dallas Mavericks run, this is help. How the Dallas Mavericks are constructed is help. You have an elite scorer in Kyrie Irving next to Luka Doncic who can create on his own. Three-level scorer, can space the floor. You have that. You have shooters, right? So the big thing with heliocentric offense is outside of the lob threat, let's space out the floor so we can have shooters. And while they are getting exposed for above-the-break threes and their lack thereof of uh, above-the-break threes, P.J. Washington is a guy that spaces out the floor. Derrick Jones Jr. is a guy that spaces out the floor, primarily in the corners, but that is still spacing. And even if if, if you want to say, hey, that, that's not really spacing, they're not really shooters, they're still lob threats. P.J. Washington can create off the dribble a little bit. I've, I've seen it before. He's a transition threat. You know what I'm saying? All, all, all of these guys are transition threats, to be honest with you. And then at the five, you got a lob threat. You got Derek Lively. You got Daniel Gafford. Hell, P.J. Washington can catch lobs. Derrick Jones Jr. can catch lobs. And I've had to take in these playoffs so far that in terms of Lob City, I think the Dallas Mavericks should be considered the new Lob City. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, in that starting line, they got three dudes that can catch Lobs at a relatively consistent basis. You know what I'm saying? If they're cutting and Luka sees you, he's going to throw it at you. And then the nucleus of that heliocentric offense, right? Luka. So to me... This argument that the Dallas Mavericks, or Luka Doncic specifically, has no help is a lie. Jason Kidd, to me, while I think Coach Missoula is a better coach, I still think Jason Kidd is an adequate coach. And my thing is, this is not the takes that y'all had going into the finals. A lot of y'all told me that whoever comes out of the Western Conference is busting Boston's ass. A lot of y'all told me that Boston ain't seen nothing like the Dallas Mavericks. Not Luka Doncic, the Dallas Mavericks. A lot of y'all told me that as a team, ever since the trade deadline, the Dallas Mavericks have had a top five net rating, top three offense and defense. And I got proof. And I got proof. This is from... I don't know the exact date, but this was leading up to the finals. Playing and the way they're utilizing all their pieces and the matchups. Mm. Like, there, it's not just Luka and Kyrie. Mm. Derek Lively, Lively is giving you something. Mm-hmm. Derek Jones and mm. PJ Washington. And when I look at how they match up with the Boston Celtics, mm. the Boston Celtics are not have not seen anything close to what the Dallas Mavericks are going to present to them as far as rim protection Mm. and wings who can defend Mm. the combination. And defensively, you could make the the case that the Dallas Mavericks are, well, we said it about Minnesota because they were the regular season best defensive team. Now, mind you, I don't even wholeheartedly disagree. I think going into this series, I believe that the Dallas Mavericks have been the toughest matchup so far. I think the Dallas Mavericks are a team that deserves to be in the finals. And as a team, even though they're heliocentric, that's the system that they run. It is effective, and it poses matchup problems for the Boston Celtics. But let's keep going with these examples. This is Richard Jefferson. My only thing is the fact that it didn't matter where Luka is, he's the best player on the floor. 
You put Kyrie on the Celtics, there's a conversation about who is the best player on this team. And that just means that at any point in time, Kyrie Luka will be the two best players. I think they are the two biggest alphas that are looking for the moment, trying to attack the moment. And there's not a question across the league that those two can handle the moment. There are questions throughout the Boston Celtics locker room. So walking into the, that series, those are the two like most battle-tested, prepared individuals and my only thing is the fact that it didn't matter. Most, most two battle tested the biggest alphas. And let me just re listen because I'm pretty sure. No matter where Luke oh, no. is, he's the best player on the floor. You put Kyrie on the Celtics, there's a conversation about who is the best player. You put Kyrie on the Celtics, and there's a conversation about who's the best player. I'm going to keep it a whole stack. Kyrie Irving, the way he's playing right now, he is the fifth best player <laughs> on the Boston Celtics. But actually, let me double check. He hasn't been better than JB. He hasn't been better than Drew. He hasn't been better than JT. He hasn't been better than Derek White. He hasn't been better than Kristaps Porzingis. He will be the sixth best player in this series so far. Okay. But wait, there's more! And I got more in the tuck. I said, I, I've been saying this all on the timeline. If you don't follow me on Twitter, go ahead and follow me. I got, listen, my bookmarks are loaded. I got receipts for a lot of y'all. I got receipts for a lot of y'all talking shit, talking bullshit on the timeline. Y'all not tricking me these, these playoffs. Mm -mm. Not me. Mm -mm. I don't. But the reality is, Rachel's asking me, have they been tested? I'm saying, if you're being tested by Andrew Nemhard and Isaiah Jackson, what are you going to do when you play them guys? Mm -hmm. What you're going through is not reality. Mm -hmm. not. Them so, guys. And them so guys. Reality is going to show up, and you're going to have to be able to make those right plays, those right executions, mm -hmm. right? Those right defensive rotation mm. you can't be sloppy like they've been against indiana because mm. when indiana you give indiana opportunities they find a way to fuck it up anyway dallas ain't gonna do that <laughs> i don't now mind you dallas did have opportunities in both game one and game two and they fucked it up all right so don't lie to me don't lie to me again you can you can say that luca's help needs to step up you can say that you know, it's just not been adequate, and they're getting out-schemed. The Boston Celtics are the better team. All of these things. But do not tell me Luka Doncic has no help. This ain't 07. Don't compare it to 07. Don't compare, don't compare it to the 2015 Cavs without Kyrie and K-Love. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's nasty work. That's nasty work. Don't compare it to the 2019 Warriors when Clay. And KD wasn't there. Don't 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 do that. Don't do that. Cause y'all told me. And, and mind you, this is not even a but y'all told me thing. I genuinely believe the Dallas Mavericks are a good team. They're just getting out schemed. They're getting out coached. All of their advantages, all of the things they like to go to on offense is being game planned for. The corner threes are getting cooked. They're forcing them to take above the break threes. Kyrie Irving is getting clamped the fuck up. The lob threats are being neutralized. And that bench is being exposed for being fraudulent. They're forcing Luka to take turnovers. Uh, to They're forcing Luka defensively. They're forcing, uh, not forcing, they're attacking Luka defensively. They're attacking Kyrie defensively. And they're forcing Luka to have a pretty decent amount of turnovers. He had eight turnovers in game two and four turnovers in game one where he only had one assist. Y'all are getting game planned for. This isn't a matter of Luka not having help. But let me go to the finals MVP point. Let me go, let me go to the finals MVP point. Because I've been seeing a lot of people say, um, not the majority, I will say that. I'm not going to lie to y'all again and say that a majority of people are saying this. But the case has been made that Luka Doncic should get finals MVP even though he's on the losing team. So much so that friend of the show, Legend of Winning, let me bring him up, has even said, let me bring him up. It's in one of his tweets over here. That long story short, um... You know, Luka Doncic, is, he, he's never seen a NBA Finals before where he feels as if, you know, the Finals MVP should go to a loser until he saw Luka Doncic. So let me let me bring that up. Let me bring that up. Give me one second, chat. Give me one second, chat. All right, here we go. This is my first time where I genuinely believe the Finals MVP should be on the losing team. Now, mind you, 
This is a guy who's been watching the NBA since 75. Now let me chill. <laughs> hey, shout out to Love. Shout out to Love. <laughs> um, but I'm going to just keep it a whole stack. I think it's the I think a combination of Lucas play hasn't been great enough. And while he's still the best player in the series, these motherfuckers have been putting up decent enough numbers to say that the finals MVP should not go to the losing team. I'm sorry. And I guess you might be asking B Souls, what would it take for you to give the losing finals the, the finals MVP? To the best player on, on the losing team. It would take a lot. And it's not 31, 11, and 6. While being a turnover machine and playing poor defense. Let me tell y'all that much. But to be more concrete and to answer that point directly. It would have to be like 40 points. 40 points a game. It would have to be, you know, close to a triple-double. You would have to be good defensively. The efficiency would be up there. It would have to go to seven games, six, seven games, right? You'd have to play defense. I don't know if I, if I already mentioned that. Um, and the disparity between you and the other squad has to be like, if, if there, there was eight motherfuckers just putting up, I don't know, 14 points a game, you know what I'm saying? Just... Let's say let's say this box score right here, uh, all the way to eight was just eight dudes putting up 13, 14 points a game, five rebounds and three assists, right? Everyone's efficiency is cool, but nothing crazy. Maybe like 48, 38, you know, 85 for the team as a whole. Then I'd probably look at giving it to the to the finals MVP. Uh giving the finals MVP to a loser then. But this is especially not play of, oh, yeah. Oh, also, Luka's not making his free throws. That was actually detrimental in game two. Luka's shooting 46% from the, from, from the line. That's, that's horrible. That's fucking horrible. Um, but, yeah, nah, I've, I've seen, specifically from LeBron, I've seen LeBron go up against better teams, have less help, and put up more dominant numbers. Um, and he didn't get the finals MVP in those NBA finals, which I agree with, which I agree with, by the way. I don't think he deserved it in 2015. Um, I don't think he deserved it in 2014. I don't think he deserved it in 2018. I don't think he deserved it in 2017. I don't think he deserved it in any of these times. Hell, even if you want to don't don't even want to look at LeBron. If we go to like a series like 2011, if we're if we're just on the on the timing of let's just give the the finals MVP to the best player even though they lost. You can make a legitimate argument that the best player in this series is Dwayne Wade. Cuz D Wade in this series was putting up 27, 7 and 5, a steal and a half, a block and a half, 55% shooting from the field. You can make a case that this finals MVP should have been D Wade if we if we're going there. And you can also make the case that D Wade's help didn't show up. Right? Chris Bosh shot 41% from the field. LeBron James was a shell of himself. Uh, Rio was shooting 43. Haslam was Haslam. Mike Miller was shooting 30%. Mike Bibby was shooting 35%. They had uh, a pretty young coach at the time in Eric Spolstra. Like, this is not the same Eric Spolstra in 2024. So, if if, if we want to do that, I just ask y'all to be consistent. And if, if we're looking at this 2024 NBA Finals run so far... As the outlier in all of this, it's not. It's not. I'm sorry. Luca has not been dominant enough. You know, and again, the the Celtics. When you look at a Drew Holiday and the numbers that he's putting up, they aren't ass enough. They aren't mid enough to just give it to Luca. Drew Holiday is putting up 19 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, playing stellar defense, specifically on Kyrie. And shooting 65, 44, 100 from the field. JB, if, even if you want to go to JB, 22 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, a block and a half on 55% shooting from the field. That just, that just, it, it just hasn't been the case. So, you know, obviously the series is still long. 
Um, there's still obviously we are still going into game three, but Luca has help, and he's not playing well enough to get the finals MVP despite being on the losing team. I'm sorry. I just want to get that shit off. Also, before I go, rest in peace to Jerry West. Uh, this is the morning where they announced the passing of NBA legend Jerry West, the logo. Um, rest in peace, one of the most impactful figures in NBA history. Um, you will be missed. You will be missed. But with that being said, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. And it's still season five. Peace.